Hello Oscar, Grandpa here. How are you? I hope you're having going to have a lovely day today and had a lovely day yesterday. And thank you, Granny Granny and me wish to thank you so much for thinking of us and wanting to uh, speak to us on FaceTime. And we had lovely times talking to you and uh, Daddy and little Annabelle. So I hope you're all well. Uh, I'm here to read you uh, a little bit more. Well, uh, guess who? Moosey, are you going to help me, Moosey? Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Uh, a little bit more from the Lucky Slow Leopard. And it's Christmas time there, isn't it? So uh, shall we read? What do you think, Moosey? We read a bit more? Yep, we'll read a bit more. Well, so Moosey's going to just sort of settle down there. Brr. There you go. Anyway, so you remember they were doing Christmas carols and they were singing, we wish, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And Zoe was singing too and all the crowd joined in. Everyone except Mr Pinch, you remember. Zoe noticed him stand, standing moodily at the back, wearing earplugs to block out the music. Grumpy old thing, thought Zoe. When the last song was finished, everyone clapped and cheered. As the crowds began to trickle towards the exit, chattering happily. Great Uncle Horace called, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for coming. That was fun, said Lucy, beaming. We'd better get back to the cottage, I think. It's time to hang your stocky up, Zoe. Are you going to sleep at the cottage tonight too? Zoe asked Great Uncle Horace, hopefully. Last year, Great Uncle Horace had stayed over on Christmas Eve because he'd given his attic room at the hall to a meerkat with earache. I don't know about a mere cat with earache, Oscar, I don't know what you think. So that the poor animal could sleep somewhere peaceful and quiet until he got better. Of course, it's a Christmas tradition now, and that way I get to spend the whole day with my two favourite people, replied Great Uncle Horace. Besides, I'm not sure Santa would get down the chimney at Higgins Hall. The last time I checked, some naughty puffins have built their nest inside it. As Mr Pinch marched, marched past, Lucy called out to him. Mr Pinch, wait a second. I want to ask you something. She took a deep breath. I just wondered if you'd like to have Christmas dinner with us tomorrow. Zoe looked at her mum in horror and Meekgade gave a squeak of disbelief. Even Great Uncle Horace seemed surprised. Mr Pinch stared at Lucy. Me, he said. Why? Because it's Christmas, said Lucy. I know you don't like it very much, but you can't spend the whole day by yourself. Please come. We'd like to spend it with you. Mr Pinch hesitated. Well, I, er, uh, suppose I could stop by for a bit. Blushing, Mr Pinch rushed off to his office. Zoe and Great Uncle Horace turned to Lucy, who sighed. Look, I know Mr Pinch can be difficult, but no one should be alone at Christmas. That's so right, Oscar. No one, no one should be alone at Christmas when everybody else is having fun. Meek was in a serious sulk. Christmas is going to be ruined, the little lemur grumbled. At least we'll have fun in the morning before he arrives, whispered Zoe, trying her best to stay cheerful. Deep down, she felt really disappointed. Mr Pincher made it very clear that he didn't like Christmas. She just knew he would moan all day long. It wasn't going to be the same with him there. On the way home, Zoe remembered something. She had one last job to do. I wonder what that is, Oscar. I'll see you at home, she told her mum, and ran over to the ice skating rink with Meep scampering behind her. That afternoon, she'd hidden something in the wooden shed where the skates were kept. A present for Ally. Ah, the little snow leopard. <coughs> Let's give it to him now, Meep, she said, tucking the parcel under her arm. <coughs> I know it's not Christmas until tomorrow, but it might cheer him up. When they arrived at his enclosure, the little cub was curled up on a rock. Look, Ali, Zoe called as she used her necklace to open the gate. We've brought you a present. She showed him the parcel and then helped him pull off the wrapping paper. Underneath was a colourful ball. Look, there's Ali with the ball. Look, what a lovely, isn't he sweet? And a lovely Christmas present. It's covered in spots like you, Zoe said. Ali stared at the ball. He gave it a little push with his paw and meowed excitedly as it rolled along. Zoe grinned. Ali loved it. Zoe Meek took turns bouncing the ball to Ali and laughed as he chased happily after it. The Meek made Zoe and Ali giggle by jumping on the ball 
and showing them how many somersaults he could turn without falling off. Before long, Zoe realised it was getting late. We'd better get home, me. Mum will be Mum will be wondering where we are, she said. To her surprise, Ali let out a miserable meow. What's wrong? cried Zoe. Look, there's poor little Ali standing with Zoe there, and Ali's looking really miserable. You were ha so happy a minute ago. Ali looked sadly at the ball and whimpered. I'm sorry, Ali. I wish we could stay and play too, Zoe told him. You know we can't be here all the time, even though we'd like to. The cub gave another small meow. Of course you won't have to play with the ball all by yourself, Zoe said. Meep and I will come back tomorrow, I promise. But that didn't help cheer up poor Ali. He padded away behind a tree, <coughs> sniffling. <coughs> Excuse me. And Zoe and Meep couldn't coax him out. Eventually they gave up and decided to go home, feeling a bit worried. How could she get Ali to realise how lucky he was? Oh dear, Zoe, you look very grum, said Great Uncle Horace as she and Meep came into the cottage. I hope you're not too upset with me for inviting Mr Pinch tomorrow, Lucy said. I promise we'll still have a lovely day. She gave Zoe a big hug. I know what will cheer you up. Why don't we hang up our stockings? Lucy quickly went up into the attic to fetch, fetch the special box they kept the stockings in. Here's yours, Zoe, her mum said, pulling it out and handing it to her. And Uncle Horace, here are yours and Kiki's. Mine's next, and let's not forget Meeps, of course, she said with a grin. Zoe hung her stocking over the fireplace with Meeps next to it. Lucy pinned hers next to Meeps, and Great Uncle Horace added his and Kiki's. They all looked very merry, all hanging in a colourful line. Then Zoe put a mince pie and a carrot on a plate and placed it carefully in front of the fireplace. So who comes down the chimney on Christmas Day then? Eh, Oscar? Hmm. Can't think who that might be. Do you know? Ah, yes, of course you do. So there's Zoe. And look, there's all their stockings hung up in front of the fireplace. Waiting for Father Christmas. Santa will be on his way now, Zoe said Lucy, smiling. <clears throat> I wonder what he'll bring. So he sighed. She just hoped Ali would cheer up in time for Christmas Day. Hopefully he'll bring the zoo a bit of Christmas cheer, she said. And her mum smiled. I thought you were desperate for another present from Santa, Lucy replied, winking at Zoe. Zoe remembered the charm bracelet she was longing for and grinned. Well, I'd really like that too, she said. <clears throat> Chapter 9. Mr Pinch's Present Whoa, look, there's Kiki, the parakeet, with, with her stocking. That's fun. So, chapter nine, Mr Pinch's present. <clears throat> Zoe, wake up, it's Christmas. Zoe's eyes flew open. Meep was bouncing on her pillow, chattering excitedly. It's Christmas, it's Christmas. Zoe leapt out of bed and dashed down the stairs, shouting for her mum and great uncle Horace. Santa Claus had been, the mince pie was nothing but crumbs. The carrot was completely gone and stockings on the mantelpiece were fat with presents. There were even some brightly wrapped parcels under the tree. Zoe and Meep danced with excitement as Lucy and Great Uncle Horace came in, yawning but looking pleased. Kiki was perched on Great Uncle Horace's shoulder, squawking happily. Merry Christmas, said Great Uncle Horace, beaming. Goodness, that stocking of mine looks rather exciting. I wonder if Santa has brought the custard creams I asked for. Custard's creams are sort of, I don't know if you've had them, Oscar, they're sort of cookie. Very nice too. <clears throat> Everyone took turns opening a present. First Zoe unwrapped a, unwrapped a colourful book about dolphins. Ooh. Then there was a box of chocolate shaped like penguins and a pair of pink pyjamas with a pattern of tiny snow leopards. They looked just like Ali, said Zoe beaming. Zoe loved her presents but she couldn't help feeling a bit disappointed. Santa hadn't brought her the bracelet she'd wanted after all. She tried hard not to mind and opened her chocolates, excuse me, to offer them around. Then Lucy said, hold on Zoe, I think you've missed one. She pointed at the toe of Zoe's stocking. There was something small and square stuffed inside it. Ooh, I wonder if it's the bracelet. Zoe reached right inside her stocking and pulled out a little red box tied with a gold ribbon. As she opened it, something gleamed and twinkled in the light from the Christmas tree. My bracelet, she cried. 
take it carefully out of the box. It was silver with tiny lion, elephant and giraffe charms. Santa brought me my bracelet. I knew he would, said Lucy with a smile. You've been so good this year, Zoe, said Lucy. Lucy unwrapped a new bag to keep all her animal medicines in. Just what I wanted, she said. And Zoe proudly gave Great Uncle Horace a special present wrapped in zebra pattern paper. This is from me and Mum, she said. Oh, that was Zoe. It was Zoe's idea, added Lucy. Great Uncle Horace pulled off the wrapping paper. A compass, he exclaimed, holding it up. And look, the rescue zoo hot air balloon is engraved on the back. Wow. It's so you'll fi always find your way home from your travels, so he explained. Oscar, if you've not, I don't know if you've seen a compass before, but it tells you the points north, south, east and west and where you are, so you can tell where to go. It's quite the nicest present I've ever had, Great Uncle Horace said sincerely. So he felt like she might burst with happiness. Where's me? asked Lucy, looking round. There was a funny munching sound coming from Meep's stocking. Zoe peeped inside and giggled. The little lemur had climbed right in and was tucking into his Christmas presents. Meep, don't eat them all at once, Zoe whispered. When her mum and great uncle Horace were busy chatting, you'll get a tummy ache. Meep didn't seem to mind. Yum, he replied, nibbling happily on another nut. Kiki was enjoying her stocking too. The clever macaw, perched on the mantelpiece with her strong claws, bent right down and tugged out her presents with her beak. Oh, that's clever. Santa had brought her a bag of nuts, three juicy carrots and some wooden toys that she could chew on to keep her beak healthy. Once Zoe had helped tidy the wrapping paper away, she got dressed and headed out into the zoo. All the keepers were there already, wearing cheerful Christmas jumpers. There was still a lot of work to do, just like any other day. Zoe rushed around helping. She carried bags of nuts to the monkeys and boxes of mangoes to the fruit bats. Everyone was having an especially tasty breakfast on Christmas morning. Great Uncle Horace put on some Christmas music and everyone sang loudly. Zoe was, Zoe was astonished to hear Mr Pinch humming along too when he thought no one was paying attention. Are you enjoying the music, Mr Pinch? she asked. Uh, Mr Pinch blushed. Uh, no, I just had a tickle in my throat, he said quickly, marching off. Ha ha ha. Mr Pinch was obviously enjoying it. Look, there they all are on Christmas morning at the zoo, feeding all the animals. Isn't that lovely? I don't know how many animals there are in the picture, but there's lots there. I can see a big giraffe. Whoa. And an elephant. And, oh, I don't know, two giraffes. Zoe tried to wish all her animal friends a happy Christmas, but there wasn't time to visit everyone. Before long, Lucy was calling, Zoe, it's time to start making Christmas dinner. Wow, Oscar. So next time, we'll find out what happens when... Lucy cooked Christmas dinner and Mr Pinch came and what happened to Ali too because we want to know that the lucky snow leopard was happy on Christmas Day, don't we? All right, well, lots of love from now and lots of love for me and Granny and, oops, wrong way up for Lucy um, and bye-bye from Lucy and uh, hope you have a lovely day. Lots of love from Granny and me. And hope to see you soon. And lots of love to your little sister. And you're really good, Oscar, with your little sister. I so love the way you play with her. And lots of love to Mummy and Daddy too. Bye for now. Bye.